I think it started way back in 1977 or 1877, was it? Feels like 1870, but um, that was me and Mickey, Tracy here, guitar player. Um, we lived quite close together in the same park, you know, and I had been playing guitar at school, and um, Mickey was playing guitar, he was learning how to play lead through cassette tapes, you know, these little tapes you get. And so, um, so we got the uh, we always got, I uh, went over to Mickey's house nearly every day and we went up to his bedroom and... Ah, 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 uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we started jamming about you know, with the guitars, but no, I was playing like rhythm guitar at this stage, you know, so um, I think we just had this idea, like, you know, listen to tunes and playing cover versions of other songs, but we, we sort of knew in the back of our mind, hey, what about a band, like, you know, we had no idea where we were going to get a drummer, where we were going to get a bass player, so um, just a bit of talk around the town, you know, where and we met a few friends, we, we, a local guy, Hugh McGuire, who um, came in started learning how to play the bass, and uh, we got him in, so, <coughs> and then to the complete the lineup, we had Jimmy McGowan, who's J Mac now, he's, he's a freelance photographer, Jay had been playing drums, and we got But he never had a drum kit. No. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, he, had, honestly, he just played cardboard boxes and, and saucepans. And that's, that's that's and we we used to rehearse. Well, we a good gig. We used to rehearse in the boys' club, which is probably about three miles, and we used to carry our guitars and a wee t small amplifier. And Jay used to carry them softpants, <laughs> and we used to <laughs> rehearse. And I was like, I'm looking back now. Why did we even bother going to the boys' club? <laughs> we could have done that in the kitchen, you know. Yeah. Play the and we had to hire a PA to, for rehearsal, you know. It maybe cost us fifteen pound for the day and. But we were learning and it was good crack, you know, but so then he arrived from another skill with a drum kit. So we had to sack Jay because he was a drum kit. What's that way? Basically here we had a drum kit. Should we got the gig? He's in the band. So got the, I actually lived right, 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 right behind my, my home house and they'd, over the fence. So That's we, right. And um, so then we, we got the Gilla rehearsing and uh, we, we rehearsed the old Boys and Gears Club, as Mickey says, but um, we just knew, yeah, this is it. You know, there, there was there was four of us, but... Um, Kind of cut long story short, I was playing rhythm guitar, Mickey was on the lead guitar, Q on bass, and Con on drums, and we were perform the old school dance, the high school prom thing, you know, we, we did the, the high school dance in St. Patrick's. And uh, what happened was, I don't know, for some reason, our bass player didn't turn up, Q didn't turn up, and being a guitar player, I sort of went off, you know, when I play the, the guitar, bass. I, I could pick up the notes as they go along, so there was no bass player. Ten minutes for the gig, so we said, my guy says, but the stop was on stage, ready to go. I strapped on the bass and thought, let's go for it, you know, have a bit of crack here. And that's how we became a three piece. We sacked Hugh, like, you know, no disrespect him, but um, he wasn't there, so we had to play bass. So, uh, and that's how we really Casper were a three piece. Well, I, I, can, I, I can only speak for myself, I don't know how the boys felt, but I think we have been trying for something like eight or nine years, mm. and we were getting kicked in the teeth all the time, we never really got a break, and it got to a stage where we were getting frustrated, and I personally wanted to work with other people to see if I could improve myself, as I worked with Pee and Connor that long. <coughs> and we tried different lineups, and I just I just got fed up getting ki and making no money, and I wanted to go out and make a few pounds and make the music pay for itself for a change because mm -hmm. that's basically what was my and and that's what happened. I just sort of we went different directions. Yeah, so as Connor was, his career yeah. took a big hold in his life, and Pee Wee went into other bands, and I went into other bands, and and life just kicked on. Well, after Casper, after uh, after Casper, we did put together. We tried to thought, okay, let's bring in a few more members. Brought a keyboard player called Jerry Tracy, and a singer called Peter mm -hmm. Turbot, local lads. And we formed another band doing the pop scene called we were called Gypsy, and we sort of like you know looking back and we we're going, my God, we had the costumes on stage, the same gear, we looked like little leprechauns and the green and white and the oh. little white boots. You know, again, the pop was thriving, you know, not in the Mo Hotel was thriving, the GA clubs and that it was going to time. So we thought, let's get it okay, let's let's yeah, go down this road. Uh, you know, that's, that's Kerry, but that was Kerry Cole, Not our music. We, we didn't want to do it, but 
that was the scene. Yeah. And we, 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 we toured about a, a few gigs around Ireland. Some of the old Casper venues were still going with it. Let's try and bring this band. But we just knew, no, it's not, it's not for us. As Mickey said, you know, my, my, I started concentrating on my career and I got married, I was getting married then, so I was, so that was it. <laughs> We were asked by Jim Hines' uh, wife to do a, a benefit gig to raise some money for a charity, I can't remember the charity, it was the, the hospital, some hospital something down there. And um, we said we would because Jim always came to the gigs. So we got together, had a bit of a rehearsal and went up and played in the way in. And we played a couple of numbers together and we started getting into it. We started really enjoying it. And then we went to the gigs. three songs. And it was only three songs, wasn't it? Two three songs. Three songs. Really. But when we got into it and we seen the reaction of the crowd, and we enjoyed it ourselves. We just thought, us old hands could still do this. Yeah. <laughs> One of the songs, and it was written in a, in a backdrop behind us, was Dun Nazi's Still in Love With You, because it was one of Jim's favourite songs. And I was, I, know, I was very nervous about playing the solos mm -hmm. in it, and I think Jim came down and helped me through it. That's the truth. Big shock to everybody because Jim was near enough the same age as us and died very young, like so we couldn't get over, so we could not say no and not do it, like you know, and that's why we got back together to do it. Me and Mickey were <coughs> we were playing in the pub scene, you see, we, we <coughs> were constantly playing all the time, so we hadn't lost any, but. Connor had to get back in and he got so enthusiastic about raw drums and mm. he sat around him and said, boys, why don't we give it another shot? Like, you know, there's the rock scene is still living out there somewhere, like, you know, so let's try and, try and revive the rock scene. And, you know, there's, there's a few young bands out there, school bands, access known pretty well. We thought, God, you know, there's still a market for the rock scene. And we just basically got together and started jamming some of the old songs. And we just knew right away after the first couple of tunes that. Mm. That was there, the spark was still there, you know, so um, took, it, took it seriously, you know.